there. I'm just rebooting. I'm having an adventure stroke. <laughs> Oh, what fun! Sorry about that. We'll just uh, we'll we'll start it up top. All right. Okay. Here we go. It's not water, huh? Yeah, wouldn't it be nice to jump in some water right now? Are the pools open yet? It's gotta be pretty soon, right? It's the Gaming Galleon! I am uh, Captain Raz, the pirate captain of this pirate ship! Can you imagine? We're on a pirate ship? It's 2017, you didn't think they existed anymore, did you? Oh yeah, they're around. Oh, let me tell you, apparently everybody's a pirate uh, expert. I get people walking into the mess hall all the time. They're looking at me like, the pirates don't wear Hawaiian shirts. Uh, pirates don't uh, drink Gatorade. Hey, buddy, you're not an expert. You're not a historian. And even if you are, we're our own people. Piracy isn't about uh, putting on a pirate patch and yelling, Yar, talk like a pirate day. That's a sham. Okay, that's for not not pirates. Okay, that's exactly the opposite of pirates. You know what piracy is? Piracy is freedom. Okay, piracy is about being a free man, living a free life, or a free woman. Give it a shot sometime, okay? And does that mean uh, you know put on a, a polka like a, like a leader hosen and call yourself a pirate? Yes, that's piracy. Okay, just because the other untrained eyes don't get it. Doesn't mean you aren't one. All right. Sorry about the rant. We've got a whole hour of this. Uh, it's a gaming game. Here we are in adventure, 
And uh, we're not too far from Indianapolis. We're actually up north in cheese country. Uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ah, yes. Where they actually have castles filled with beer and cheese just off the interstate. If you think I'm kidding, look them up. They're out there. Uh, we went up there last weekend. Uh, I went up there last weekend personally with uh, my brother-in-law to the Midwest Gaming Classic. Okay? So we're going to be talking about that this hour. We're going to be playing a game that's crazy obscure. I found it in a pawn shop. Not a pawn shop. I found it in a retro game store. And if you, if you know, you know, retro game, these stores, the markup Mario and Zelda, you know, whatever, Final Fantasy VII. But if they find something they, that the computer doesn't know what it is, it's bare bottom prices. And that's how we found this. We're going to be playing a Mega Drive game. A Mega Drive game called Yang Warrior Family. Uh, obviously, we have a whole bunch. We got a whole bunch. It's like it, it, it's just it's like, like a Wisconsin German uh, Wiener Schnitzel buffet in the chest here, okay? And then obviously we have uh, your questions, concerns, and whatnot in the mailbag. And for you, uh, you lollygaggers who are sitting in the mess hall, if you decide to get a little lippy and want to leave a question, we'll address that live, okay? So how's that sound? So a lot to do. Uh, let me tell you about the Midwest classic gaming convention uh it was like you know last friday i was planning on going to illinois driving out to see my family and uh, about an hour before i was going to leave my brother-in-law texted me and said hey how would you like to go to milwaukee wisconsin to this gaming convention in uh, a hotel in sheridan which is where we're parked okay which is perfect, because it's like it's halfway between a hotel, it's got a nice pool, and there's a mall also. Uh, the convention's since moved on, but, uh, you know, the crew has been, you know, they're getting mani petties at the hotel, and, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're walking around uh, the mall, uh, gawking at the, the Disney Infinity prices at GameStop. So they're busy for the day, so it's just me and you here in Wisconsin. And I want to tell you about what it was like going to a retro gaming convention because I'm not sure I've ever been to one. I've been to a lot of different conventions, but we don't have here, or we don't have in, in, in Indianapolis where I spend the majority of my conventions. Uh, we don't have a retro gaming one. There's a Comic Con and a Pop Con and Gen Con, but no flat out retro gaming. Uh, and it was um, pretty incredible. The first thing we did was we had to get tickets. It took about 10 minutes to get tickets. And uh, we're in line. And there's like, uh, you know, it's it's like a line into a big tent. And the big tent's supposed to have nothing but vendors. And then the hotel is supposed to have more like uh, console games set up and like a museum. A lot of the more rare stuff that they wouldn't obviously want to get them. You know, uh, more historical stuff. Clubs events uh, and then like a whole host of actual console like arcade games to play there were like over 200 but getting in it was just this big long line not that long it took like 10 minutes to get through but we get to the top of the line and uh he paid he is a he's a nice guy lawrence he, tre he treated uh we get in there and the first booth it's like maybe you know, 20 feet from, from where we got in, there was a Hyperkin booth. And Hyperkin are the guys who make the Retron 5 and a host of other modern retro, retro systems. Like, uh, you know, a Nintendo and a Super Nintendo all in one, that kind of stuff. And this guy's selling, like, the Retron 5, and he's got the uh, that awesome uh, Game Gear slash Sega Master System converter that just came out. Um I really got my eye on that. Uh, but they were all, you know, priced as, as uh, you know, retail priced. That that adapter's like 60 bucks. The Retron 5 is like 125 You know, most of the stuff he had was somewhere in that range. And then he had this one thing sitting there with a big $5 price tag on it. I'm like, really? Five bucks? He's like, yep. He had like three of them. And I'm looking around like, am I the only one who sees this? 
And I say to Lawrence, Lawrence, you want one of these? He's like, yeah. He's like, all right, I'll take two. And he's like, you got cash? And I'm like, no. And he's like, all right. Uh, I'm like, all right, Lawrence, pay him. <laughs> so I owe Lawrence 10 bucks. But I think it was 10 bucks well spent. Check this out. Get out of here with the cheese. Oh, by the way, why does this say no cheese? Uh, I, I, I got on a boat one day. I think we found this in a lot way back in the day at a thrift store. I walked in here one on the captain's quarters, all of a sudden there's nose all over it. Apparently, uh, B first mate Bismuth took this thing to a gaming tournament and thought it would be amusing to wear a hot hat that said no cheese. You know, like no cheesy play, no cheap play. I'm having to explain it because it's not that funny. All right, anyway. Where were we? So anyway, for five bucks, we walked away with this guy. It's too full. I don't want you to see what's in there. The FC Mobile 2. Okay? Look at that guy. It's a portable, battery-powered, cartridge-based Nintendo. Portable. Okay? And it comes with two infrared Super Nintendo wannabe controllers. But they're actually uh, controllers that are, have auto fire built in. And then a light gun that's also battery powered. I believe a light gun and these are AAA batteries, which sucks. But this guy was four AA's? Four AA's. Why was it $5? He had two colors. Let's take a look at everything here. These controllers smell like cheap Chinese plastic. You know, that says Hyperkin there. Auto fire, you got a couple of shoulder buttons. I don't know what we'd need those for in NES. It's NES only. I, I like that there's uh, the, the a Phillips screwdriver to, to do that. You know, you can throw it across the room and that kind of lose the batteries. And they actually say one and two, player one, player two on there. Uh, here's the light gun. Light gun is a, is a dead ringer for the old NES. It's just, it's really light. It's cheap as can be. Looks like there's an on-off switch in the back there. Right there, and a light, so you know if it's on or not. And then uh, a battery pack. Will it work with this? I don't know. Uh, this has an AV out. So you can plug this into a television and play your NES games on the big screen, much like a Nomad. Um, you know, you can pop your, your Nintendo game in here. You've got a couple of AV outs that come with it. And you plug that in, and you're, you're good. I tested it. It worked. Let's get some tunes going here. about that even on that tinny cheap Chinese uh, battery or uh, speaker double dragon still sounds amazing it's got a headphone jack and you know the screen really doesn't look that bad the controls you know they've got that stupid PlayStation thing where the d-pad has been separated so that kind of sucks uh, that you know obviously is going to affect um, how well you can turn around in Castlevania and stuff and Double Dragon uh, but it does have auto fire so I think this guy might be okay for shooters and you know where what would really shine on one of these guys is, a, is a, an RPG Dragon Warrior 4 would be a lot of fun on this thing I think so uh, yeah shocking huh start up a game here can I start the game oh yeah Memories? Memories, it's all blown out. They're taking uh, Jennifer. Is her name Jennifer? Alright, anyway. So, so yeah, and he only had three of these on the table. Now, I suppose he could have sold some already. But I was like, is this it? He's like, yeah, just those. I guess this is probably discontinued. 
And maybe they were just sitting in the warehouse? I don't know how old this thing is. I haven't really been able to get that accurate of a price on it. It doesn't seem to be like on Amazon or anything like that. So that leads me to believe it's discontinued. Uh, but for five bucks, I thought this was great. And the best part about it was it inspired my, my brother-in-law, Lawrence, to start sifting around the dirty Tupperwares of these vendors looking for really cheap Nintendo games. It's like really cheap, common Nintendo games, which is a blast. It's so he's... He's very good with retro. He's he's not he's good with retro gaming, but he does emulation for the most part. He's got a, a pretty nice laptop and he plays off that. And he, he plays a lot of pinball. So to see him digging around for Nintendo games, uh, that, that that I got a real smile out of that. So oh my god, we're 13 in. Let's get started. Again, this game, Mega Drive. Never played it before. Uh, what can I tell you? I can, I tell you we we got it for 99 cents. It's called Yang Warrior Family. And I haven't played it, but if I were to describe it, I'd say it's a feudal Japanese golden axe. Does that not sound amazing? Okay, let's get started, and then we'll get into this. We're, there's too much to do. We're way behind. It's a uh, Yang Warrior Family. Maybe it's, called, it's probably called Family Warrior Family Yang. Who knows? Anyway, Yang Warrior Family for the Mega Drive, otherwise known as the Japanese Sega Genesis. Did I mention that? The Mega Drive. Let's get started. First time we ever did a Mega Drive game. Let's do it. Right. Okay, yeah, that's that's what we had to go with. Oh man, there goes my headphones. Well, let's get started. One player, two play. I'll go with one play. How many guys are there? Oh, there's four guys. So yeah, you got kind of an axe battler guy, a guy who looks like, kind of like Gilius Thunder. It's kind of like the grandpa. Uh, you know, maybe this is the uncle, and then uh, the sis. I'm totally going with the big guy. I always like to go with these guys, and I ran out of time. Okay, that was a good timing. Oh. Okay, so that's jump, that's punch. Got it. Wow, I got four enemies on the screen there. So, yeah, I walked into this place in Lafayette, and again, you know, I did what you should always do when you walk into a, a, a store. I, uh, I asked, do you guys got anything behind the counter there? Don't, you know, don't just stick me with what's on the rack, guys. Where's the good stuff? And so they pull out, you know, a stack of N64 games. We're really to the point where we have every, every N64 game we're ever going to want, except for maybe Clay Fighter. Sculptor's Cut. I think I just ate a pig. Or at least picked it up. That was awesome. I just ate a raw pig. <laughs> well, I don't know what I expected. Was I going to use it as a weapon? Can I run? No, no running. Oh, yeah! Uh, you know, the N64 games, nothing special there. And then they pull out about eight uh, Sega Genesis games loose. And first of all, they're like, are you okay with looking at loose Sega Genesis cards, sir? And I'm like, absolutely. They're like, yeah, because there are a lot of people who aren't interested in Jega Genesis without the cases. And I'm like, well, they must be very rich people or something. Because for me, I mean, I love the cases for Genesis. It's always a treat to get them. But what counts is, can I play the game? So I'm like, yeah, let me take a look. And it was, you know, a number of pretty common things. I think there was an Earthworm Jim there. And then these, and then two Mega Drive games. And I meant to show you what a Mega Drive game looked like. We'll, we'll do that at the booty segment because I've got it in front of me. Uh, there were two of them. There was this one, which has that this this big muscle dude, his grandpa who had like a halberd or something, and then the chick. I don't know what the chick's rolling with. Are those robots, by the way? Oh, am I dead already? I've got like. That special move. Do I have any other moves? I don't think so. So, uh, it was this game and another game I can't pronounce. Another game I can't pronounce is called Shu Hu Feng Yong Zhuan. And it's got like some sort of samurai on it. Uh, I took a look, I just looked at a little YouTube video of this stuff, saw, saw enough to see that this is a brawler. And the other one's a brawler too. 
the brawl the other brawler actually looks like um it looked like a clone of knights of the round table believe it or not it was a guy with a sword was fighting and he was doing that that over the over the like that double hander leaping double handed swipe downward swipe that king arthur does in knights of the round for, by capcom so i'm like is this a capcom game was this re reskinned for japanese audiences or was knights of the round wow this this guy's throw does nothing ooh oh oh is this kind of like how would i do that i run it i Oh, this might run like um, like Streets of Rage. Huh. I'm doing this game too much honor by saying it's Streets of Rage. Doesn't have nearly now. That's a, that's points. I think doesn't have nearly as many uh, moves as Streets of Rage. I like they couldn't be bothered to name any of the guys. <laughs> Not that we'd know, they'd be in Japanese or you know, I believe this is Japanese. Uh the card itself, Yang Warrior Family. I'm not even sure this is an official Mega Drive game. Um I'll try and pull the cart at the end of the show so you guys can take a look at it, but it's it's like the cheapest cart plastic I've ever come across and the label itself looks like it's been printed out and uh, doesn't really match the molding of the cart at all so but a dollar for a brawler I'm not I was like this is awesome and I just felt like the whole trip between all the stuff that we got on the booty segment from the the Midwest gaming Expo and all the obscure stuff we saw at the Midwest. Today's show is basically a freak show. It's basically a freak show. You're gonna see something stuff that you either don't see often or have never seen. And you know, what better place to to host a freak show than Wisconsin, right? Am I right, folks? All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> How we doing on time? This is a very long trail, and I I went heavy. So to be honest, we should be coming back. But I want to see what's across the bridge. I have a feeling there may be a boss waiting, awaiting us. Ugh. And I mean, it plays okay. I just think it's a little... I think this guy should be taking way more damage off than he is, especially the throws. I mean, these guys may as well be blocking Hadoukens here. What's in this castle? Does anyone know? Hello? Oof. But yeah, Midwest Gaming Classic pretty much had something for everyone. Uh, Lawrence, my brother-in-law, he spent the majority of his time checking out the pinball. They had a lot of pinball, guys. Uh, pinball I'd never seen before. They've really made some serious advancements. And where the, the big advancement that I saw was the size of the scoreboards scoring. All right, we're, we're jumping in. What's in here? Is there a boss in here? Oh, my God, everything's on fire. Oh, yeah, that's a boss. Let's fight. Let's beat this guy up, then we'll hit the booty segment. Yeah, he's just said and done, Reyes. Why? <laughs> this guy's got a whole army of Voldos. I hate Voldo, by the way. Worst fighting game character ever. I'm about to bite it. Oh, I hope I have another guy. Please tell me I have another guy. Okay. Don't you hate those games that it's game over where it says there's still one left? I hate that. Oh, wow. These guys are jerks. Got to push the boss. Screw the ads. Ah! Let me into your world. Oh, not the cheap throw. Really got to get him with the kicks. Yeah. Oh, one more. Yeah. <laughs> Huzzah. Anybody see my my harp? Yes. All right. We'll see where that guy goes later. I was excited.
Oh, we got a little Chinese cutscene going on here. Nothing you can't live without. Oh. You guys, want to, you guys want me to keep that music going? Good music. Alright! Oh, kill the music, Grandpa. Okay. That's a story. Press start. Alright, we're good. Okay. No audio. What do you mean no audio? Can you guys not hear me? Hello? Check, check. One, zoo. Testing, testing. Apparently, you can hit start on player two controller when you're on the last life. Then play player two. When you're what are you looking at? Cheats? Are we doing okay in the audio section? Can I continue? No audio in the game. Really? Huh. Uh, well, guys, we're just going to have to go without audio in the game this week. Sorry. Unless uh, I can get uh, an, uh, I get a hand from Bismuth, but I don't know what he could do at the moment. Uh, let's just continue the voyage. Yeah. yeah. It sucks, but, you know, what are you going to do? I'll just make some sound effects halfway through, okay? All right. Let's get to the booty segment. There's a lot going on in here. Uh... Yeah, so there's most of the time with these retro gaming tournaments uh, conventions, you're gonna see ninety percent of the vendors. Like Lawrence, he went to he went for the, the pinball. Now me, I'm gonna go for the vendors. I want to see what they got there. You know, uh, now they mostly had rare stuff, import stuff, expensive stuff. But there was this one vendor who. They, they went the total opposite way and they just brought all their trash and they brought them in big Tupperware bins heard it when you played the music weird I don't know I don't know I don't know if it's stacked wrong bismuth or what anyway uh, it looks stack, like it's stacked right to me but I, I don't know I don't know I can't deal with it right now Anyway, uh, sorry to keep derailing the show. Anyway, this one guy had a bunch of Tupperwares, and they had posts sticking out that said things like dollar a game or 250 for a, uh, a controller. And, I, I'm, you know, we had just gotten there. We just bought that, that Hyperkin thing. And I actually also bought another game to go out of order. Not to go out of order here, but... I was looking around and I did find one Sega RPG that I've been looking for for a while. It's called Rings of Power. They wanted 12 bucks for it. I got it for 10. That's really not that great of a price. But when I saw this particular cart, I had to grab it because the you know there's the spine, Rings of Power, made by Naughty Dog, believe it or not, makers of uh, Uncharted. But the front label here, someone had glued to the front a little excerpt from. What has to have been from a game, a game from a magazine. I don't know if you can read that. No, of course you can't. I'm not going to take the time to uh, autofocus it, but what this says here is Rings of Power Nude Code. This is an RPG for the Sega Genesis, and they put in a nude code for the opening so that you can see the busty tavern girl who's in the, on the title screen with her top off. Look it up. It's worth the search. <laughs> so, seeing that, it was almost like I had to get this particular copy. Because I'll never find a copy with the nude code on the cart ever again. Okay, getting back to this, this crazy vendor with all this trash. Uh, I looked around, I glanced around a little bit, but we had just, we had the whole show still to go through. So I had no idea if this guy was a diamond in the rough or there were going to be more places like this. But I do remember hearing him say to one person that someone was like, uh, "What's it, is this been a dollar game?" And he's like, "Yeah, it's a dollar game there. Uh, most of the games are a dollar. Uh, controllers are two for five, and hardware's five dollars each." 
hardware like as in gaming consoles. Okay, but again, I had no point of reference at this point. So I walk around the vendor hall, see that most people are, you know, basically, you know, really asking for an arm or leg with everything that they had. And uh, me and Lawrence, I think we got, we might have gotten lunch. And then we went to the pinball, looked around there, and then he had, like, you know, we were playing some games together, and then he had an air hockey tournament that he'd signed up for that he was going to go to. So that's when I was like, I'm going to go back to the vendor hall. And I went back to that guy, and I heard, I had this thing in my head, kept bringing, you know, $5 for hardware. And I, I thought, huh, well, what does he have? And I look, and he's got just stacks and stacks of filthy PS2s with, like, you know, the hard drive ripped out of it, or, you know, the CD cases missing in the front, CD covers missing in the front, uh, piles of original Xboxes, and then for some reason, sitting on top of all those, and again, I was like, am I the only one who sees this? There goes the skull again. Now the show another skull. We have this guy. Check it out. Mattel Electronics and television. The Intellivision 1. Sitting on a stack of dead PS2s. Very likely dead itself, but sitting there for $5. Now, we don't have one of these. And while I played one as a kid, I always thought that I was never that terribly impressed because the controllers are weird. But here we are, $5 for a piece of hardware that came with both controllers. Why? Because the controllers are actually attached to the, the Intellivision. It's a very strange system. And I looked at the hookups in the back. Well, I don't know where it is now. Shoot. I don't know where it is now. But anyway, I looked at the hookups in the back. And there's like one place to put one cord, an RF cord, and then the power cord, which is attached. But there was actually a silver piece sticking out of here. And I guess it's with the wire. I'm not going to take the time to find the wire. Oh, wait, I bet I know where it is. Here it is. This piece was sticking out of the back of the Intellivision. like so and that's a coaxial that's an RF to coaxial adapter and what does that mean this thing by itself runs off an RF cable an RF cable is essentially an H the HD HDMI cable of the 70s okay it runs all your video and all your audio out of that wire but most TVs are so old that they don't have RF ins anymore. Well, somebody who owned this thing was playing it recently enough where they were trying to play it on a more modern television. So they had actually gone through the trouble of buying this adapter and there it sat in there. So now, instead of having to have an RF cable, you just need a coaxial cable. And if you don't know what a coaxial cable is, go look at your cable box. It's probably, aside from the, the HDMI cable, it's the most common cable in your house. So now all you need is a coaxial cable to plug into the back of your TV and you're good to go. I tested this baby. She works. And how do you test an Intellivision? Well, you need some games. So I started digging around. This guy had boxed Intellivision games for a buck each and he had loose Intellivision games for 50 cents each. So I was like, hot dog, I started digging through this Tupperware like uh, some sort of uh, tunnel rat. All right, let's take a look. Let's see what games we got for the old television. First here we got Star Strike. Again, the boxed games were a buck. And let's just take a look at that box art, huh? What do you got? You got one scene where two ships are passing the night. You got a third, another scene where 
a ship is going through kind of like a Death Star cavern. And then finally, of course, you have a giant planet exploding. I believe this is like Intellivision's attempt to recreate Skywalker taking out the Death Star. When you open up one of these guys, it actually opens like a book. You've got the instructions there. You've got the game. And then underneath the game, you have some overlays. And those overlays slide into the controller where there were like nine buttons, like a telephone, an old telephone. Uh, and those, those buttons change. They're context sensitive depending on what the game is and what overlay you're using. So there you go. Pretty cool. Star Strike for a buck. Another one we got. We got some real throwaways here, but again, it was for a dollar. Just the experience of seeing how these games were presented was enough for me to pick it up. You had blackjack and poker. Open that guy up. Everybody's having a good time. Everybody's having a good time around the poker. There you got the overlays. What have you. Game's fine. It's durable. Don't worry about it. A couple more box games here. A couple more box games here. We had uh, auto racing. And auto racing for a 4-bit game looks really good. Take a look at that. It looks like it's kind of scrolling. I think there's like four different tracks. It's two-player. You can also uh, race against the clock. So pretty full-featured racing game. It's even got some overlays there uh, to gear shift, I believe. How about that, huh? And then finally, Major League Baseball. Again, really just grabbing this. It's two-player. Uh, it might be okay. You know, we could play baseball on 10 million other systems. More just grabbing this just for that, that full... Well, at this point, I had absolutely no television games, so I just figured let's go for it. What What's Destiny got, you know, for us, for our little collection, okay? All right, now let's check, it, check out the Lucy's. We found the Lucy's for 50 cents each. All right, NHL Hockey. Arcade Classic Frogger. Played this when I was testing out the machine. A lot of fun on, on uh, the television. Tron Mazatron. I think this is the only licensed game we had. And it's almost like a kind of a top-down platformer kind of a thing. It's pretty fun. Space Armada. This is a Space Invaders clone. Frog Bog was probably the, the, the most interesting game. This is the kind of game that your three-year-old uh, nephew can get a kick out of. All you do is press the dial, and your frog jumps from one lily pad to the next, and there's flies flying around above your head. And if you jump at the right time, the, like this little auto tongue will come out and snatch the fly. Okay. So, yeah, uh, just making sure there's no audio problems right now. Uh, Frog Bog was a lot of fun. Really liked this one. It's probably the, the Street Fighter from television games. <laughs> uh, Night, Night Stalker that actually came with this little overlay. I think this is uh, another kind of run and gunner, top down run and gunner. I haven't played this one yet. I do like that. that uh, this one probably has the best overlay though. It's like a, it's like a spider web and like cool, like telling you which way you can shoot, I guess. Four different ways to shoot. Astro Smash, which is usually considered to be like the, the killer app of the Intellivision. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shooter. You know, static shooter. Atlantis. Playing Magic. Great on the Atari. Uh, surprisingly good on the Intellivision. I think it might have it. I think it might be a better game on the Intellivision. It seemed to have a little more strategy to it. Is that it? That was it. Oh, wait, one more. And then, hey, how about this? How about this? Three in one, triple action. You got tanks. You got uh, tanks, boats, I think. Boats fighting each other. And then finally, uh, stock car racing. All in one. How about that, huh? Atari just had combat, and television had triple action. And then uh, there was other stuff. There was more, more random stuff. 
and these Tupperwares that I just couldn't say no to. For a dollar, we found one of these Sega Genesis plug and plays. One of these mini Sega Genesis plug and plays. It's got six games on there. Very durable. We have the other two. Uh, this one has the Ooze, Sonic 2, Eco the Dolphin, Columns, Alex Kidd in the Miracle World, and, um, or maybe it's Alex Kidd in Enchanted Castle. And then finally, Gain Ground. Gain Ground is like a personal favorite of mine, one of the best Sega Genesis games ever made. So this was cool. For a buck. For a dollar. Uh, this was, I think they, they, I think what happened was they, this was supposed to be, that was supposed to be a dollar, but I think he misrung me. He, I think he misrung me. Charged me two fifty on that because he thought it was a controller. All plug and plays were a dollar. Like, so he had like Atari flashbacks sitting there for a dollar, but we have enough of those. Uh, this is just the, I think I got this for two fifty. This is a, a, an adapter box, an RF adapter box. If you have an Atari, if you have an Intellivision, and you don't have that coaxial adapter, this thing is essential to get you started. And I don't see these this often. So I grabbed it just in case. I think I paid $250 on that. $250 on this guy. This is a Super Nintendo controller where the six buttons, there is no shoulder buttons. The six buttons are right there like a Street Fighter format. And there's a lot of great fighters on the street on the Super Nintendo, but they're you don't want to play them because the format of the six buttons is terrible. In this day and age, you go to the Sega Genesis to play fighters. I'm talking 16-bit fighters. But with this, finally your Super Nintendo fighters are worth checking out. Um, I don't know how good this thing is quality-wise. I haven't even tried it to be honest. This D-pad's probably terrible, but uh, I was just I was too taken by it. You, you just don't see that. Super Nintendo button layout. Enough. This thing. What a jaw dropper. For two fifty, we found the Innovation Dreamcast to PlayStation Two adapter. Why is this important? Because there's a lot of great Dreamcast fighting games out there, but the controller sucks for them. So now, and and you can buy you know a stick. For Dreamcast, but they're usually really expensive, and you don't see them often. So you're gonna have to buy shipping, uh, and even if you find one in a store, they're gonna be expensive. But it's a lot easier for you to find a PS1 stick or a PS2 stick, which we have a good number of in the hold. So now we can play, and it's interesting. It's even got for anyone who really knows what it's a Sega Genesis, Sega Dreamcast works. The, these two, you've got the, the port, and then on the side there, there's where the, the VMU, the visual memory unit, plugs in. So you can't get a memory card going on this thing. So this is awesome. Street Fighter 3 is finally playable on the Sega Dreamcast. And these, we paid 250 These go for like 30 bucks usually. Uh, I just, I, I've never seen them. I, I've never seen one. They're just, they're way too hard to find. And expensive and I've always wanted one and there it was in this filthy you know almost like gypsy like vendor and then finally in a Tupperware all the way in the bottom past some controllers I found some Game Gear games a buck each um, what do we got we got virtual fighter animation virtual fighter animation here, I'll tell you what. Iron Man and uh, War Machine? Iron Man and Man of War and Heavy Metal. This is really good on the Saturn. Uh, I don't know how it is on the game here. Ren and Stimpy, Quest for the Shaven Yak. <laughs> that's right, I said Quest for the Shaven Yak. That's not my joke, that's Ren and Stimpy's. And then finally, How Can You Leave It Behind? The Game Gear version of Shaq Fu. Look for that on a future voyage, I'm sure. So that's it. Uh, we walked out of there 20 bucks for all that stuff. No, that's not true. It was the first trip was the Intellivision and the games. That all worked out to about $15. And then I went back, got the Game Gear games, the, uh, the various other stuff for around 20 
Uh, and then on the way back to Lafayette, on the way back to uh, Indianapolis, the same place where I got Yang Warrior Family. They had these sitting up here for a buck each. We got Microsurgeon. Not sure what that's all about, but I, I, you'll notice there's a, a spaceship going into the guy's mouth. So, I don't know. Horse racing for a dollar complete. Auto racing. Why did I get a second one of this? Well, when I was testing the system, my auto racing doesn't work. So, I grabbed this one. Uh, space battle. This one looks awesome. That one looks really good. Don't you want to be the guy dispatching the ships there? And then uh, skiing, because for a buck, why not? So there you go, lots lots going on there. I think we spent about five bucks on those. Uh, somewhere around $40 for all this crap. $40, $50 if you're in, in, including the uh, the two uh, Retron things at the beginning of the show. So, you know, but it's a convention. And I think we walked away with a lot of good stuff. I mean, television works fine. It's two-player. Uh, and televisions are weird. Don't don't be don't think you found a deal because you see it in television and a stack full of boxed games for seventy dollars. These things aren't worth anything. They're they're hands down the cheapest uh, system out there, even more than the Atari. Nobody wants the Intellivision. Okay, you can easily find boxed games in a retail store for a dollar. So be patient enough and wait, which is what I did. I didn't buy the Intellivision flashback. I didn't buy the Intellivision 2 when I saw it with a bunch of games a couple of years back for $70. I waited, and here we are with a beautiful, beautiful example of the Intellivision 1 and a modest bunch of games. How about that, okay? All right, let's get back to Yang Warrior Family. And then we'll hit the, the mailbag, and then we'll be done with our little trip in Wisconsin. Can you smell the cheese? Neither can I. All I smell is dry rot. We are on a pirate ship after all. Okay, it's uh, Yang. Everybody see my harp? What a mess. Yang Warrior Family for the Mega Drive. I think uh, I think they win. I think the, I think Europe and, and Japan win in the cool Sega Genesis console. I mean, do you agree? Sega Genesis or Mega Drive? Mega Drive sounds badass if you ask me. Alright, here we go. I don't know if you guys have audio or not with this. We're just going to go with it. How are we doing on time? Oh, look at how fast that guy is. Little guys. I'm not going to stop the action, but if you guys want to tell me if you have audio, yeah, feel free to let me know for uh, for technician's sake. Not that we have any technicians on this ship. Uh, we're pirates. You know, we don't really know much about how to fix things. We're not coders. We're not programmers. It'd be great to have a guy like that. But those guys are pretty smart. They don't they don't go to a lot of taverns. They don't like getting uh, blackout drunk, which is usually how we do our recruiting. <laughs> I mean, I mean we're not we're not totally historical, but you can't break with some traditions. Oh, this guy's got a whip. Oh 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 gee. Uh, uh, which one is yes? <laughs> Does anyone know? I, I'm guessing this one. Oh wait, it's got to be this one. Oh boy. Oh thank God. All right, let's try. Uh, what does the girl have? The girl has two. Uh, I think I'd rather play Grandpa. Oh, jeez, you thought the big guy was slow. Wow. Oh man. 
Oh, but he's got a fast uh, charge there. Keep him at bay. I liked it. Oh. Wow, we may be able to see another guy here pretty soon. He sucks. Either he sucks or I suck. It makes me wonder. Well, no, I'm sure this is a Mega Drive game. I just, I think the main reason this didn't make it to America in any way, in any sh way, shape, or form, is it's just, it's pretty sluggish. It's pretty bare bones. But I do like the scenery. It's not even telling me what we're picking up. <laughs> well, the nice thing about this guy is he, he hits people from behind every time. That's nice. Oh boy, more robots. What else happened in uh, the retro gaming class I should tell you guys about? busy to tell you oh oh yeah so the the pinball machines you know I remember in the 90s when pinball scoring changed from uh, you know a digital readout to the dot matrix screen all of a sudden you're seeing cartoons during the uh, you know up on the uh, on, on the scoreboard so now they have just for the scoring on some of these more modern machines, like for example, The Hobbit. I saw, I saw Peter Jackson's The Hobbit uh, pinball machine. This thing has a full on, like, flat screen uh, LED TV. Is LED the right acronym? It's a flat screen TV, okay? It's HDMI, it's, it's, it's HDTV. And so you're seeing just clip after clip of the movie and all these, uh, you know, or hurry up bonuses going on and, you know, kill three spiders and, and this time, this timer's going off and the dwarves are yelling and it was like serious business, this machine. Really cool. But the ironic thing was, was it seems like, I don't know how many of you played pinball in the 90s, but... The inflation for pinball scores was just like through the roof. Like to get a free a free guy on, like say Terminator 2 back in the 90s, you'd have to get like a quarter of a billion points. Now it was like for The Hobbit, uh, it was it was an amazing accomplishment to get like 1.5 million. So it's really interesting to see how the pinball market has had to like totally reinvented scoring. I want to try the chick real quick before we get done. Check. Let's see how she is. Oh, cool! She's oh, do you see that? She's throwing daggers on people while they're down. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. But yeah, is this a, is this gonna replace Streets of Rage too? Yeah, I don't think so. It's just uh, not enough moves here. Makes me wonder how that other Mega Drive Brawler is that we picked up. I might have to kick that in after the voyage and see if it's any better. Especially because it looked like Knights of the Round. Uh, so yeah, pinball was really different. I think my biggest complaint with the, the Midwest Gaming Classic was I didn't see a lot of fighting games. Uh, I love fighting games. They're really the reason I would go, I go to an arcade for the most part. You know, I like to play some shooters like R-Type in the arcade, but uh, really what's going to keep me around the longest is fighting games. And I came across a Street Fighter Champion Edition machine. I was like, this is great. Some kid, some guy was playing it, some like, uh, you know, 20-year-old guy in his 20s, kind of Asian guy. And uh, he was playing Chun-Li. I was like, do you mind if I play? And he's like, yeah, no problem. So I punch up, uh, I open with Dalsam. And he's doing a really good job. He's pacing well. He's, he's facing me just fine. He's got like the, the wall jump mastered. He's mixing it up with the heel kick. 
And uh, he beats me. I think he beat me. He might have beaten me two rounds. Like, I didn't even get a round on him. I'm like, all right, well, let me try with Honda. E Honda. The sumo wrestler, for those of you at home who don't know. Uh, and uh, it was ch my Honda versus his Chun Li. And I beat him in the third round. So he comes back. He's like, all right, one more. And he comes back with Zangi. And he. Uh, he takes, he's doing great. This guy really knows his spacing. He takes me in the first round, but then I really roll him in the second round. And what does he do? we got one round left. One round kind of to decide, you know, in this third match, who's going to get two out of three. Uh, <laughs> he, he walks away. He's done. He's like, <laughs> he's like forget it, I'm out. No, he didn't even say that. I'm like, wait, wait, there's one more round. He's like, no, 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 no. I gotta, I gotta go. And this seems to be the mentality that I've noticed of the fighting game fan who's grown up playing fighting games on consoles. Here's my big complaint. My, my, here's my, my editorial letter to 20 year olds playing fighting games. Hey, pal, if you lost, loser pays. Okay. That means you get off the machine if there's someone else in the room ready to play. Winner stays. You're out. Every 20-year-old I play in the arcades these days, 20-something, even 30-something, any, anybody who didn't grow up in the arcades when Street Fighter was out, anybody who, who didn't actually put a quarter in to play these games, anybody who didn't actually wait their turn, they're always trying to get like, you know, let me get one more round in. Let me get one more round in. No, you're off. You're off the machine. And then I sound like the jerk. You know, I sound like the old uh, curmudgeon for, uh, you know, for holding these people. It's ridiculous. Like, you're off the machine. I'm sorry. Oh, they didn't kill her. Uh, <laughs> That's too bad. The old flash, huh? Ah, oh, man, I'm talking about cheaping it out. Okay, let's see uh, what's in the mailbag here. Yang Warrior Family, uh, do you need it? Do you need it in your collection? No. Not really. Let's pull it out of the machine so you can take a look at uh, how cheap this, this thing is. Like I said, I would not be surprised if this thing was uh, homemade. I mean, it certainly looks like it would be like kind of like Golden Axe. You got three three fighters there and then on the back look at look at how cheesy this is the the nuts are plastic molded those aren't real nuts and then it's a 16 bit right here it's a 16 bit and really playful playful letters so I don't know this looks like it's a homemade situation who knows is it worth a dollar absolutely really happy to have it all right, that's it. It's been a weird show full of all kinds of oddities and uh, things that, you know, usually would get rejected, but we took them in. Uh, they were sitting in Tupperware. They were dusty, forgotten, and we've given them a great home to sit in and see the world on. So, hey, at least we got that going for us, right? Can we write that off on our taxes? Let's check out the mailbag, all right? Okay. Okay, so we got a couple things from the P.O. Box. How about that, huh? P.O. Box is always extra special. If you ever want to send something that's larger than just a hello or a kiss, you can send it to the Gaming Galleon, P.O. Box 199254, Indianapolis, Indiana, 49216. 49216. Okay, and we got a couple things. They're not big, but hey, there we there, here they are. We checked. I checked, and I was delighted to see them. Okay, this first one says uh, "time sensitive material enclosed," and it's from uh, our friends in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the Comcast business. Okay, haven't talked to them in a while or ever. Let's see what this has to say. Oh, it's as if we sign up for uh, if we sign up now. We'll be able to uh, get our internet, our phone, and TV for just uh, $34.90 a month. 
How about that? Well, that's not bad. That comes from the heart. What about this one? This also comes from the Comcast business. Uh, and uh, they they lovingly sent it to current business, P.O. Box 199254. Let's see what they have to say. Good friends at Comcast. Uh, it's the same thing, but it's signed by Jeff Bazzelli, the senior vice president, Comcast Business Services. I mean, isn't that a heart? It's isn't that a heart tugger? I think so. Okay, gang. Uh, it was a great voyage. If you ever make it up to uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, try the Panda Express in Kenosha on the way. It's to die for. Okay. All right. I love you guys. Thanks for imagining with me. Thanks for adventuring with me. Thanks for deal hunting with me. And I hope to see you next week, okay? Don't ever let anybody take that imagination from you. It's yours, and by God, you better use it. We'll see you next time. And until then, farewell and adieu to ye Spanish maidens. Farewell and adieu. Ye ladies of Spain, for we received orders for to sail to Milwaukee, and we may never see ye fair ladies again. And television's great. Get one. Oh my God! I just don't overpay for them. And keep your powder dry, ladies. All right, did we have uh, did we have sound for that second time? What a mess. This place is a mess. Let me get my chair. Uh, um, we were going to do a song today, but unfortunately uh, Joshua could not make it. We're still uh, we're still trying to just nail down our schedule here. This is for those for any of you who actually watch on YouTube or care. Uh, the, the way the YouTube schedule I want to do is, you know, obviously we shoot our voyages live on Twitch Thursdays. Then I finish the show and move it over to YouTube and drop it Fridays for the YouTube audience. Uh, and then my plan is every Monday I want to drop something and it'll be alternating. Uh, every Monday it's going to be Let's Play Pirates, Assassin's Creed, Black Flag, and then the following week will be a song, and then we'll alternate every other Monday. Because the the Let's Plays, you know, if it, I I almost feel like the Let's Plays are for me alone, just because I'm excited to do it, um, and they're long. I'm not going to edit them. I'm not going. I'm just, they're just going to go raw. Just if you want to experience life, the golden age of piracy with me. That's what that Let's Play is all about. And I think it's like a historical side to the channel. It adds an, a, a historical side to the channel. You get to learn a little bit more about the the real players of the Age of Piracy and and um, the locations that, uh, you know, these, these, these men of the 18th century and women, uh, you know, lived in. Uh, and then, you know, obviously I love doing the songs, so... Uh, but, uh, you know, everybody's busy, and we have to learn them. So uh, I want I don't want us to burn out, so I'm looking at a two-week cycle with those. So. so that's where we are right now. We do not have a song. We just dropped the song Monday. So we've got, you know, I'm hoping to drop it, our next song, not this Monday, but next Monday. This Monday, I'm going to drop the part two of Let's Be Pirates. Let's Play Pirates. Okay. Yep, body was good. Okay, good. I, I don't know why that happened. I also don't know why we rebooted. Uh, I mean, what? <sighs> Talk about timing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we had, I mean, the, 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 the broadcast was running for two hours. And as soon as, as soon as I'm starting the show, that's when it crashes. 
Makes no sense. Makes no sense. Oh, my God. Okay. All right, let me uh, get a chair. And then we'll, uh, we'll go through the chat together. Whew. Oh, Zoe. I hope you guys don't mind me taking this stuff off. The boat, the boat's not climate controlled. We've got a little, uh, we've got a little space heater, and we've got a little uh, wall-mounted air conditioner. But I don't like to use them because I feel like they're just going to create all this exter extraneous sound, and we don't need that. We get enough technical problems on this production. Okay, pizza guys here. What kind of pizza again? All right, I'm going all the way back up to the top here. There's not much to see. I don't think uh, I made the mistake of uh, refreshing at some point. Oh, yeah, when we rebooted. So I think anything that was said prior to the reboot, I don't have. If somebody wants to be a gold star... Pirate's Pet and copy and paste the entire chat and send it to my Gmail. Uh, 